so let us let me uh, please introduce you Peter uh, so uh, our uh, second uh, talk in the session uh, belongs to Peter Olanipen Kun on critical submanifolds uh, of the Wilmore energy in four dimensions this this uh, should be very very uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, talk, um, and the Peter is from the University of Auckland. So please, Peter, you can start. Um, thank you very much. Can you all hear me, please? Can you hear me? Yes, okay. Thank you very much uh, for that introduction and many thanks to the organizers of this conference uh, for this wonderful opportunity to actually come together and um, talk about mathematics. Um, as already, as we already know, I'll be talking about uh, uh, critical submanifolds of the Wilmore energy in four dimensions. Um, actually, um, this talk um, is uh, from the paper, which of course is already on archive. Uh, the title of the paper is Rigidity um, Result for Four-Dimensional Wilmore Submanifolds. Uh, with boundary, and uh, of course, uh, I'll be making reference to uh, uh, the Wilmore energy in four dimension. And actually, this uh, article here, which actually is from my thesis, uh, talks about uh, that. So I'm presenting all this so that uh, uh, if anyone wants to check that up later, then they can easily have a good reference uh, to look at. And then, of course, from that, we, I also have uh, this uh, preprint, uh, which is actually looking at the submanifold of uh, which are critical points of the Wilmore energy, and then checking whether these submanifolds are actually smooth. Well, the outline of my talk is as follows. I will bring, begin with what already is known in literature, which is the Wilmore energy in two dimensions. And then from there, uh, we we'll talk about uh, some rigidity results that are known for submanifolds, for surfaces. And then I will gradually move into uh, four dimensions and uh, we'll look at Wilmer energy in four dimensions. And then I will talk about uh, where this energy came from. Uh, yeah, because uh, it's, it's a question of interest as to what the four dimensional generalization of the Wilmer energy will be. Uh, so I will talk about uh, where that uh, I'm considering in this uh, talk came from. And then uh, we'll talk about uh, the four Wilmore equation, and then we'll end the talk with uh, several uh, coverture estimates, and then uh, uh, the rigidity result itself. Okay, let's start um, uh, with, let's just uh, put up some notations. Uh, we will use sigma to represent a closed oriented uh, surface with no boundary. And in four dimension, that will just be a submanifold. Uh, uh, yeah, with the appropriate boundary to be specified later. And then uh, we we'll take phi to be an immersion of uh, sigma uh, into uh, the Euclidean space. And then, of course, uh, gij will be the component of the first fundamental form, hij, which is a vector, uh, a normal vector size will be uh, the second fundamental form. And of course, you look here, you see that um, uh, the second fundamental form is two derivatives of the immersion. And uh, then the mean curvature is defined this way, is half of the trace of the second fundamental form. Uh, that's actually the way, I, uh, that's what I use uh, in 2D. But in 4D, we we'll, we'll define it as one fourth of the trace of the second fundamental form. And of course, uh, we have the trace-free part of the second fundamental form, uh, which is given this way, uh, by H naught. And of course, we can take a vector and split it into the tangential part and also the normal part. And uh, I will move it by hand to denote uh, tangential, uh, to denote normal projection, and by T to denote uh, uh, tangential projection. Okay, so with all this set, let's talk about the Wilmer energy itself. The Wilmer energy is uh, nothing but uh, the integral of the uh, square of the mean curvature. And it's an energy that has been widely studied uh, in literature. It was first introduced by uh, Pasteur and uh, Sophie German uh, independently at the beginning of the uh, 19th century. 
but its complete formalism was due to uh, Thomas J. Wilmot, and of course, it was named after him. There are lots of uh, several, there are several earlier works that have been done on the Wilmot energy. In 1924, uh, uh, Gerard Thompson computed the euler lagrange equation for the Wilmot energy, and in 1929, Blaschke. Uh, studied what uh, he called conformal minimal surfaces, which uh, today uh, we call uh, the examples of uh, Wilmot surfaces. And then in 1979, uh, Joel Weiner uh, generalized the work of Thomson Nyako dimension. And then uh, Wilmot himself in 1993 explored the lower bounds of uh, the Wilmot energy of a closed oriented, orientable surface. And in 1965, uh, there is this uh, famous conjecture, which is called the Wilmot conjecture. And it states in the class of Mars, Tori, the Clifford Toros, the minimum G of two pi squared. Uh, so like I said, this is the Wilmot energy. And, uh, and of course, uh, when you take, uh, when you vary it, you obtain equation two, which is uh, the Lagrange equation, but it's well known as the Wilmot equation, where here I have used, uh, Laplace perp to denote the negative covariant Laplacian and the connection for the connection in the normal bond obtained from the ambient uh, scalar product in our So a critical point of this uh, energy is called the Wilmot surface. And of course, uh, we can talk about uh, where this energy actually came from. Uh, the, so in, in, the, it's, you know, in, 19, in 1816, Sophie Germain postulated uh, a quantity that looks today like what we know as uh, energy. And then, uh, of course, there is also an application of the woman energy in conformal geometry, uh, where the works of these persons have actually uh, come up. Thomas, uh, Thompson, Shadow, Lash K, and Wilma himself. In relativity, the Wilma energy is this, uh, is here, right here. It's a, uh, a major term of what we know as the Hawking mass of two spheres. And in cell biology, uh, you consider the Elfrich model, the Wilmore energy also plays uh, an active role. And in mechanical elasticity and optimal design, you also find the Wilmore energy there. So it's all over the place in science. And that's something that motivates uh, researchers to study Wilmore energy in 2D. And of, of course, uh, there are several kinds of uh, rigidity results that have been proven or different kinds of uh, submanifolds under different uh, context. Uh, uh, of course, we cannot list all of them here, but uh, these are just some of them. We have the work of uh, Anderson, where he studied the convergence and rigidity of manifolds on the rich uh, curvature bounds. And uh, there is the work of Fisher, uh, where he looked at uh, you know, the rigidity terms for minimal submanifolds. So, and then Lawson, Riley, Fetsu, and uh, et al. Uh, studied the rigidity result for submanifolds, for submanifolds, some for minimal submanifolds. And then uh, you find the uh, Kubat uh, Schatzley, uh, they looked at the Wimo energy, and then they study uh, critical points of the Wimo energy, but then they consider the rigidity result for this critical point. And these, some of the things that I would that I'll talk about today actually are, um, are closer in spirit to the work of uh, Kuva Schatzley. Uh, so um, also you find another work of Kuva Schatzley, uh, which is uh, titled The Wilmot Flow with Small Energy, uh, published in Journal of Differential Geometry in 2001. So some of the estimates that, uh, that I used in obtaining my results are uh, closer to some of the estimates found in these two last uh, references. And then recently, McCoy and Wheeler, in uh, one of their papers published in 2020 in Hanaus of Global Analysis and Geometry, uh, they proved the following theorem actually. And what does this theorem say? So they considered an energy, which is just a gradient of uh, H, where H, capital H, is the main curvature. So the gradient of H squared. And then they vary that uh, energy. Of course, what they get as the Euler Lagrange equation is this equation right here. So they said that any immersion satisfying this uh, Euler Lagrange equation 
with these boundary conditions, which, which they call the flat boundary condition, because you see here that uh, the full curvature tensor here is zero uh, on the boundary. And then if F satisfies this smallness condition, so the L2 norm of, uh, of uh, the full curvature tensor actually is very small, sufficiently small, then uh, the immersion, the mass surface actually is part of a plane. Uh, yes, so that was the result. So we 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 try to look at um, that result and see uh, what sort of result we can get uh, for uh, uh, Wilmot submanifolds. Actually, so the first question is, what will be the uh, generalization of the Wilmot energy in four D? Actually, this this has been uh, a question of interest uh, for a, for a long time uh, for those working in, uh, on Wilmot energy. Uh, so, but then if we look at the Wilmore energy, we see that the Wilmore energy itself has some properties. And then we want the four dimensional generalization of the Wilmore energy to actually preserve these properties that we see in the two dimensional Wilmore energy. So, what are the properties that the two dimensional Wilmore energy has? First of all, the Wilmore energy is conformally invariant up to Kalgao's Bonnet terms. And of course, we can see here that we can write the Wilmore energy in terms of uh, this quantity here, where pi of uh, pi chi of uh, sigma is just uh, is just a is just a, a topological constant. So, if you vary the Wilmore energy, same as uh, varying uh, this energy involving the full coefficient tensor or the energy involving the trace free of, uh, trace free part of the second fundamental form, because they are equal up to some constant. And then uh, not, not only that, another property we find is that the leading uh, operator in the Wilmore equation is linear. So that's another property that we want to preserve as we generalize to four dimension. Not only that, minimal surfaces are critical points of the Wilmore energy. So we want uh, an energy whose critical points include uh, minimal uh, submanifolds, for instance. Not only that, the Wilmer energy is non-negative. So the first problem is to obtain a four-dimensional uh, generalization of the Wilmer energy, that, of course, that preserve all these properties above. But then uh, we see that uh, there is a relationship between this problem and what is known in literature as the singular Yamabe problem, which actually says that if we have, you know, uh, a, a four, a, an n-dimensional manifold, and then let sigma be an hypersurface, be actually the boundary of that manifold. So the singular Yamabe problem has for a defining function u for the boundary of M, such that on the interior of M, the scalar curvature RG of the metric, uh, which uh, is given this way, uh, satisfies uh, this, this equation here. So there is a problem between these two, uh, between the singular Yamabe problem and the problem here. So, but then in literature, in, uh, um, 1974, Luna and uh, Nuremberg were the first to consider uh, the singular Yamabe problem. And then in 1992, Anderson and Frederick also uh, worked on that. And then Rodgova and uh, some of his collaborators in a series of people also uh, considered that. And then what they discovered is that uh, this energy, this is the energy that uh, qualifies as the four-dimensional generalization of the Wilmore energy. Well, before that, there have been several attempts in literature to generalize the Wilmore energy. Uh, one of the attempts is, is to consider, so if integral of H squared is the Wilmore energy, why don't you just do integral of H to the power of P, where P will correspond to the dimension? But then we discover that if we have such energy, this sort of energy, uh, the P Wilmore energy, as it's called in literature, it will not preserve all the properties. For instance, minimal surface, um, for instance, the leading operator in the uh, Euler Lagrange equation for this energy will not uh, be linear. So, also, this energy was uh, proposed. And then, of course, uh, the one involving the uh, determinants of uh, the full curvature tensor and the trace free part of the full uh, of, uh, of, uh, of curvature was also proposed. But uh, all these do not satisfy. Uh, the, the properties that we want to preserve. But then in 2005, Gouvin, who is a physicist, was able to construct an energy uh, that we that uh, that I actually now study. And then uh, it was 
later confirmed by uh, Robin Graham and Richard in 2017, by Chang in 2021. Then the energy actually is this one here, the one that I denote as uh, equation four, where uh, nabla h square is just this, and then uh, h dot h square is exactly he, this, and h raised to power four is h dot h all square. So this energy is conformally invariant, but then it's not bounded below, but it preserves the properties that we want. And then here is the, so we take the energy, we vary it, and then we obtain the uh, four Wimore equation. And what actually do we get? This is exactly what we get. So we get uh, theorem one. Let phi be an emission of a four dimensional manifold. Phi is Wilmore for this energy, for this four dimensional Wilmore energy, if and only if phi satisfies the following uh, four Wilmore equation, which is five. So what exactly is this W is all of this. And when you look at this, we discover that uh, uh, this is a cyst other partial differential equation. Why? Because H itself is two derivatives of phi. And here you have, uh, uh, you have uh, four derivatives of H. So then you have six derivatives. So phi, so this is a sixth order partial, uh, partial differential equation. And of course, we know not much has been done in terms of uh, studying geometric, so in, in, in terms of uh, the geometric study of PD, or for, of six, uh, sixth order PD. And of course, also it's not it's non linear, but uh, the leading operator is linear. So this is the Euler Lagrange equation. Or, what we call the four Wimore equation for that uh, particular energy with uh, lots of terms involved. Then, now uh, the main theorem actually is this. The main theorem of this work is this theorem right here. So let phi be an emission of a four dimensional manifold sigma satisfying these two uh, conditions. So the L2 norm of, uh, of the curvature actually. Uh, sufficiently small and the L4 norm of the curvature is sufficiently small. Of course, H is in L4. When you look at uh, the way the energy itself is defined. So if phi also satisfies the four Wilmore equation that we saw on the previous slide, together with the boundary conditions, with these boundary conditions, uh, which uh, of course uh, is just a totally geodesic uh, condition because you see here, that uh, on the boundary, um, the full curvature tensor is actually vanishing. Then the submanifold is umbilic with totally geodesic boundary. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a beautiful result. So, but then to prove this, we actually need some, uh, to study up a few things. We need to define uh, some function uh, that will help us anytime we are integrating on the boundary. So that at least uh, things don't blow up. So let phi be our emission, and then we take uh, we take uh, this function from R m to uh, to uh, the interval zero one. Let that function be differentiable with uh, compact support. Then we take this composition with its extra assumption, and then we set c gamma equal to c over rho, where c is an absolute constant, and then rho will be actually specified later. Then once we do that. We obtain our first lemma. Actually, we have series of lemmas, which are not all presented here because of time. Series of them leading to uh, the completion of the proof. Of course, I've already put uh, um, the preprint at the beginning of the talk. So, um, so here is the first lemma. So we first uh, find a bound for uh, the Laplace part of H squared. We, we bound this in terms of uh, the Wilmore operator. That's the left-hand side of the Wilmore equation, of the four Wilmore equation, call that the Wilmore operator. And then we have other quantities as well uh, of lower other terms. And then uh, the next lemma actually give us, okay, so with this um, estimate, we can actually obtain further esti curvature estimates uh, involving these two terms. And then, of course, we bound these two terms, uh, grid, uh, two derivatives of H projected onto the normal bundle square. And then plus uh, this as well. Of course, this one is not difficult to bound. So we bound this as well. And then finally, we obtain this. Uh, 
this lemma. Uh, it's just these are all the estimates and estimates, estimates involving curvature, making sure that uh, the curvatures are well behaved, and then nothing weird is happening. And then with this, uh, with this, uh, now we need to use uh, the Michael Sobolev inequality, which uh, is stated this way. Of course, uh, we keep a boundary term here because we are working on the boundary. And of course, for us here, uh, the dimension is four, so we put in all the details and we can have this particular case, uh, which is the last inequality here on the slide. And that's exactly, we use that to obtain the next lemma. So now we'll see that uh, we have uh, some of the terms on the right-hand side of uh, of uh, the right hand side of the inequality looking like a L2 norm of uh, H or L4 norm of H, which we know by assumption are well controlled, they are sufficiently small. And then we know that the critical points actually satisfy W equals to zero. So this first time can die when we are considering the critical points of uh, the energy. And then we can choose P equals to four so that the left-hand side of the inequality we saw on the previous uh, slide is bounded above with regards to the L2 and the L4 norms of the second fundamental form, which of course by assumption are also bounded by epsilon. Then we can take rho uh, as rho goes to infinity uh, so that uh, C gamma also goes to zero, and then we land here. And from this, we conclude that uh, sigma has to be an oblique uh, with most of manifold with totally geodesic boundary. Um, and that's the end of the talk. <laughs> Thank you very much, Peter. That was a great uh, uh, talk.